A call to action. Every day, every hour even, if you listen to the news bulletins, we hear almost all of the broadcasts given over to the latest information about the spread and devastating effects of the coronavirus. All over Easter, we were hearing about the increased numbers of people who had died, not only in our hospitals, but then in care homes, as they began to be included in the statistics. Then, as the lockdown continued, alongside wonderful stories of heroism and self-sacrifice, serious questions were and are being asked about the way our government is dealing with the crisis, about the inadequate number of tests and shortages of protection equipment for care workers as well as medics. Now, as there seems to be what the reporters are calling some glimpse of light at the end of the tunnel, we're beginning to ask ourselves, what will the future look like? But as we move on here in the UK and Western Europe, the deadly virus is now spreading in other parts of the world, our world, to countries where they do not have the healthcare systems that we can rely on. Hospitals, doctors, nurses, the NHS, ambulances, carers, protective equipment, IC units, ventilators, hot water, sanitizers. There people live in crowded conditions where it is impossible to maintain social distancing, where there are no food banks, no plentiful sources of clean water for hygiene and sanitation, in city slums, in refugee camps, in remote villages. In Sierra Leone, there are no ICU beds. In South Sudan, they have only two ventilators for 12 million people. So what can you do? You could use your computer or iPad or tablet to visit cafod.org.uk forward slash coronavirus. You will find a call to action there. You will find out how CAFOD is responding to the crisis in these developing countries. You could sign the petition to the UK government to ask them to ensure that the most vulnerable and marginalised people are the priority in the UK's international efforts. You might even be willing to donate. So why not do it now, today?